let me introduce you to Hunix. Hunix is a free open source operating system that's focused specifically on anonymity, privacy, and security. It uses the Tor Anonymity Network, which we cover in detail in its own section, and it's based on Debian GNU Linux, one of the operating systems I highly recommend, as you should know already by now. Hunix implements security through isolation, which is why it's here in the section on isolation. It's an operating system that specifically uses the principle of isolation to enable security for privacy and anonymity. What does Hunix help you do? Well, it will help you hide your internet service provider assigned IP address. It will prevent your ISP from spying on you. It can prevent websites from identifying you. It can prevent malware from identifying you. And it can help you circumvent censorship. Hunix isn't like the other operating systems and live operating systems we have gone through in that it is focused on the principle of isolation. The Hunix developers provide a nice summary of what Hunix is, and this is what they have to say. Hunix consists of two parts. One solely runs Tor and acts as a gateway, which they call the Hunix gateway, and which you can see here in VirtualBox. The other, which they call the Hunix workstation, is on a completely isolated network. Only connections through Tor are possible. With Hunix, you can use applications and run servers anonymously over the internet. DNS leaks for all intents and purposes are impossible, and not even malware with root privileges can find out the user's real internet assigned IP address. So as you can see here, the workstation and the gateway are virtual machines available for download in the OVA format, which is an open standard for packaging and distributing virtual applications. We went through how to use these already in setting up a testing environment. This is where you would download the OVA virtual machines, the workstation and the gateway. So you would need to download and import into VirtualBox and you're good to go for testing out Hunix. You can also download the scripts and install Hunix from source. As you can see here, Hunix works in VirtualBox, KVM and Cubes. Cubes we haven't discussed yet. Cubes we're going to discuss later. For the best security, you would use Hunix with Cubes, and then a step down would be to use it with KVM, and a step down further would be to use it with VirtualBox. But there's no reason why you can't use it with VirtualBox for testing it out and having a play with it. VirtualBox is not inherently insecure, it's just that KVM and particularly Cubes are a much more secure solution to put Hunix on. But as I said, we're going to cover Cubes a little bit later on. But no matter what hypervisor you use, it is two virtual machines. It is the gateway here, and it is a workstation here. Let me show you the network configuration. And all of the settings and configurations work straight out of the box because it's an OVA file. So you don't have to change these network settings that I'm about to show you. So if you look here, you can see adapter one is on NAT and adapter 2 is on internal network and the network name is Hunix. So two network adapters. This one is going onto my local network and therefore will go to the internet because it's assigned DHCP from my router and firewall. And then here is the internal network that it's created called the Hunix network. There is no other network. Now, if we go to the workstation, look at its network settings, and you can see its network adapter is set to be on the Hunix network, the internal network. So the workstation is only connected to the gateway. It is not connected to my local LAN in any way. So as the Hunix gateway name suggests, the gateway is a gateway for the workstation. So let me start the gateway 
and show you what this looks like. The gateway has to be started first because that creates the Tor connection. So there it's starting. And this is a KDE desktop and it starts to do its initial checks. And I'll start the workstation. And you can see the workstation is also doing its initial checks. I'll show you how that network isolation is configured here on the workstation. And there you can see the IP address 10.152.152.11 for the workstation. And for ETH1, which is the local VM only network, is the 10.152.152.10 IP address. For the gateway, they both have slash 18 subnets. Then if we look at the root, we can see that the workstation has 10.152.152.10 as its default gateway. So all traffic is being sent to the gateway. The workstation here is used for your tasks like email, browsing the web, and the gateways role is to enforce the Tor connection. This is the network isolation. The workstation cannot tell what its real IP address is. So neither can an adversary who may have happened to hack the workstation via say a browser hack or a phishing attack, which is why they say leaks are impossible in Hunix. And malware with even root privileges cannot find out the user's real IP address. This is the isolation principle. It's not technically impossible, but it is more difficult because as you can see, any malware that's on here would have to hack this gateway via the network or find some other way to determine the real IP address. So it's much more difficult. Also, because we're using VMs, hardware IDs and MAC addresses are also protected as virtual machines act as isolation from the host and other VMs. So there you are, you can see browsing the web using Tor. Let's have a look at the gateway first. So let's start at the top here. What we're looking at here is something called ARM. It's the anonymizing relay monitor. So it's like a status monitor for Tor and for this gateway. It shows things like resource usage, bandwidth, CPU. It's a little bit like top, but for Tor. So you can see there some data being downloaded from the workstation. If I press M, you'll see similar sort of functionality as you do in the Tor browser. So I can create a new identity. I can stop Tor, restart. I can go through the setup wizard and set the gateway up as a relay or bridge or client. That's not going to mean much to you yet unless you understand Tor, but we do cover all this in the section on Tor. So don't worry about that for now. Then you can view the connections, various circuits there that are set up the current configurations, the talk file, talk file is used to configure Tor. Again, we're going to talk through this later in the section on Tor. So that's ARM. You can think of it as top for Tor. Next is time sync. Tor requires an accurate time or it will fail to work. Establishing the correct time using standard methods such as an unauthenticated NTP is a potential de-anonymizer. So Hunix has to use another method. Hunix uses something called SDW date. And this is it now running in order to try and establish the time. When Hunix starts, if it doesn't believe it has the correct time, it will automatically start time sync. And as it says here, don't use the internet until time sync has been successful. While we're waiting for that, there's also Hunix check. This checks the VM. It looks for Tor browser updates, OS updates, Hunix versions, Hunix news, 
plus a long list of other checks that it does. So we can see there the time sync was good. And this is the Hunix check. And you can see here, this is warning me that you need to do an app get update and an app get dist upgrade in order to get the latest packages from Debian and Hunix. That check happens every time you start the virtual machines. You can make configurations to the talk file using this link here. We cover the talk file in the section on tour. I've had an extra setting here, sandbox one. You can make user firewall setting changes. These are the global settings. And this is where a lot of the gateways configuration is as to what it does, whether it's a transparent proxy on what port and so on. One of the best things about Hunix is the Hunix gateway itself. Any VM not just the Hunix workstation, as long as it's configured correctly, could use the Hunix gateway to take advantage of its security features and the torification of that internet connection. In fact, you don't technically have to be a VM either. If the gateway is configured in a certain way, a physical machine could also use the gateway. If you want to connect your own workstation to the Hunix gateway, then you will need to connect it to the Hunix network, as we saw here. Once it's on the Hunix network, it needs to have the right IP addresses set up. You can use the IP address of the workstation if you're not using the workstation, 10.152.152.11, but I believe you can use any IP address that's in that subnet. So for example, I've got a workstation with .50, It'll need a subnet mask, which is slash 18, which translates into 255.255.192.0. Your default gateway should be set up, obviously, as the Hunix gateway, which always has this address, 10.152.152.10, and preferred DNS should also be the same. And then your own custom workstation should work with the Hunix gateway. Your own custom workstation is inferior if you're not using SOX proxy. So that's something you're going to have to look into to setting up if you want to use your own workstation. But that's a more advanced usage of Hunix. And there's a useful link here for setting up your own workstation. So check that out. What you can see here is a representation of the Hunix workstation here, the Hunix gateway here, and then the three hop circuit of the Tor network, first node, second node, third node, and then the destination. The Hunix gateway here acts as both a transparent Tor proxy and a SOX proxy. Transparent means that even if downloaded applications aren't configured to use Tor, they will still go through the Hunix gateway and be transparently Torified. Transparent as in transparent Tor proxy. This is a good feature. It means you can download and install things that you need and they don't need to be specifically configured to use Tor. They can go through the transparent proxy. But note, all trans proxied apps use the same Tor circuit. So as you can see illustrated here, they go through the same nodes, they'll have the same exit IP address and be seen as the same to the destination. Now SOX proxies, on the other hand, is used when an application is specifically configured to use Tor as a proxy. So for example, the proxy settings within the browser. If you look here, these are the SOX proxied applications within Hunix and the ports that they use and whether they are pre-installed and pre-configured to use SOX. So you can see the Tor browser here is connecting locally on the workstation on port 9150 and is using the SOX proxy. If you install Thunderbird, then this will also use the SOX proxy. There's also command line apps that you do need to go through Tor. And of course, these also go to the SOX proxy. So you've got things like wget, curl, 
aptitude and app get for downloading your apps from the repository. So plenty of pre-configured applications to use a SOX proxy. And that's good because using the SOX proxy is better for security because it provides what is called stream isolation, i.e. each application uses a different Tor circuit as illustrated here. So you can see this one's going that way, this one's going that way, this one's going that way. Therefore, each application going through the SOX proxy potentially has a different IP address. Not always. They may have a different circuit, but their exit node may be the same. Even so, this protects against identity correlation attacks because of Tor circuit sharing. It is recommended you use a different workstation per alias to prevent correlation attacks. I talk more on correlation attacks in the section on Tor. If you want to get a little bit more advanced with Hunix, it is possible to run Hunix on a physical machine to provide physical isolation, which has its security pros and cons. The Hunix gateway is best to be physically isolated. And if you want to know more about that, read here and understand the various options and the pros and cons if you want to consider going down the physical isolation route. Let's have a look at the workstation now. As I said, this is where you use the internet and you find the Tor browser. You'll find the workstation to be very sparse on applications. This is by design to reduce the possible attack surface. So if you look in applications here, you can go through and have a look what they've got. As I said, not too much, but that's by design. But you're able to install any applications that you want. And after installing, it will use the trans proxy unless you specifically configure it to use a SOX proxy. You download apps in just the same way as on any other Debian distribution. So for example, that's how you install iStove, Enigmail and Torbirdie. Just the same, AppGet or Aptitude. There's no restrictions. Check here for what SOX proxies might be available for any apps that you might want to install. What's great is that whatever you install, will go through the gateway and it will be Torified. So there's no chance of leaks. With any operating system where Tor isn't happening on a gateway, newly installed applications could leak. This is why it's not advisable to install applications on Tails because the Torification happens within Tails. So you need to specifically configure applications to go through Tor SOX proxies or Tor transparent proxies. Let's look at its features list here. So obviously you've got a lot of anonymous services. You can do IRC, you can do email. As we said, it's based on Debian, which is great. It's also based on Tor. You can use it with VirtualBox, although VirtualBox is not recommended for the most secure configuration. As it says here, you can Torify almost any application. That's one of its major, major bonuses. And you can potentially Torify any operating system as well. If you set up your own workstation, DNS sec over Tor, encrypted DNS. It's free open source. And you have the IP DNS leak protection, which is so important. And the list goes on. Oh yes, it also includes John Donham. And it can also be used for touring anonymizing services through other anonymizing services. We talk about that in its own section. And here it's got some advantages of Hunix. What do we think of these? Install any software package. That's a great feature. That's a great advantage over live operating systems where you cannot do that. And then a lot of the rest of this is about preventing leaks, which again is its main benefit really because of the isolation. Let me read a couple of recommendations from the Hunix site, which I think are important for you to know about. So it's recommended that you keep a master copy of Hunix workstation, keep it updated, 
make regular clean snapshots, but do not edit any settings or install additional software or use it directly for any activity. Instead, make a clone or use snapshotting, but never mix up clean and unclean states for activities that require anonymity. After importing the VMs, do a first run of the Hunix gateway and workstation virtual machines, securely update it. After that, stop and do not browse anywhere or open any unauthenticated communication channel to the internet. Shut down the virtual machines and create snapshots of their clean state before browsing or initiating any connections with the outside world. Note, the only exception to this is running APT, which has a guaranteed way of securing and verifying packages. So some important steps there that you should follow.